This video is supported by Lumerit Scholar. What would you do if you had a billion dollars? We hear this question a lot and it's usually framed in the sense of like, you know, what do you want to do with your life? Like, what would you do if money was no option? But really, a billion dollars can make a lot of change in the world. I've talked ad nauseum on this channel about Elon Musk and how he uses his capitalistic ventures to sort of further his vision for the world. And I've talked about uh, Jeff Bezos and how he wants to transform humanity through Blue Origin. Of course, they have more than a billion. Jeff Bezos has more billions than anybody else in the world right now. But one name that doesn't make the headlines nearly as much is Bill Gates. And he really should. Bill Gates, of course, became one of the richest men in the world by creating Microsoft, but he retired as CEO of that company in 2014 and has since focused on humanitarian and philanthropical efforts through his foundation that he runs with his wife, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Their foundation focuses on global issues of inequity in the areas of health, education, and economic development, especially in the developing world. Specifically, they spent millions of dollars fighting HIV and malaria in Africa. But one of his big passions is clean energy. In a fantastic TED talk that I'll link here, Bill talks about how the world global output of energy is gonna go up 48% in the next 50 years, and the problems associated with the traditional forms of energy that we've been using in meeting that need. Traditional energy sources are too dirty, most renewable sources are too intermittent, so on and so on. What we need, he says, is a miracle, something new and innovative. We need a huge leap forward in our thinking on energy production which is exactly why he's gotten on board with a company called TerraPower. There's no such thing as a perfect energy source, except of course fusion, which we all know is always a few decades away. Fusion and an eight-year-old after eating a pound of chocolate. But you know, child labor laws. Nuclear energy is a topic that tends to split a room, but the fact is we need to be embracing every type of energy source available, and nuclear is one of the only carbon-free sources of energy that is not intermittent. And with a few very high-profile exceptions, nuclear has proven to be safe and reliable. But, of course, there is a downside. The waste product associated with nuclear energy is highly radioactive and dangerous for thousands of years, and storing that is going to be difficult in the future. But another problem is the issue of, of uranium enrichment. Something like 99% of the uranium that's dug up out of the ground is the isotope uranium-238. And the problem with U-238 is it's not fissile. You can't actually use that in nuclear reactors. For that, you need U-235. U-235 is only 0.7% of the uranium that gets mined, which means you need to take this ore and pull the 235 out and concentrate it. That's what uranium enrichment is. But that means that 99% of the ore that gets dug up out of the ground goes completely unused. Wasteful? A bit. This is one of the many reasons why alternatives like thorium get a lot of attention, but what if we could actually do something with that U-238? This is exactly what TerraPower wants to achieve with their traveling wave reactor. The basic idea is this, you take this super abundant U-238 and you pack it into a reactor, and then through a process that uses a small amount of enriched uranium, blast it with neutrons. The atoms absorb a neutron, turning it into uranium-239. This has a half-life of 23 minutes before it decays into Neptunium-239, which has a half-life of 2.4 days before it decays into Plutonium-239. The conversion of uranium-238 to Plutonium-239 is what's known as breeding. Insert orgy joke here. This plutonium-239 is highly fissile, so it fissions, which creates heat, which is used to turn turbines and create electricity. So you basically get this wave traveling through the reactor, creating four zones. The fresh zone, which contains the fuel, the breeding zone, where the uranium-238 gets converted into plutonium-239, the fission zone, where the plutonium fissions and generates heat, and the depleted zone, which contains the spent fuel. This wave of breeding uranium into plutonium is where it gets its name, traveling wave reactor. And this happens really slowly over several years. In theory, a traveling wave reactor would only have to be refueled once a decade. And there's plenty of fuel to go around. We've dug up so much uranium-238 that our current supplies could provide 80% of the US power grid for the next 1,000 years. And maybe we'll figure out fusion by then. TerraPower has stated that our current supplies of uranium-238 represent over a trillion dollars of electricity. Now, this is just a starting point for TerraPower. Over time, once this uh, process is perfected, they want to actually be able to do the same thing with spent nuclear waste. So we would actually be able to use our stockpiles of nuclear waste that are out there, which there's an increasing supply of that as well. But on top of innovating on traveling wave reactor technology, or TWR technology, they're also bringing back a type of technology that showed a lot of promise but never really saw the light of day, and that's liquid molten salt reactor technology. In the case of TerraPower, they call it MCFR, or the Molten Chloride Fast Reactor. This type of reactor uses molten salt as a coolant, which 
works at much higher temperatures and holds its temperature for longer, making it much more efficient at, you know, creating steam and turning turbines. Put these two technologies together and this is what you get. A hybrid breeder and molten salt reactor. This is what TerraPower wants to achieve, with a little help from Bill Gates and supercomputers. These technologies are fairly unproven. Molten salt reactors did do a lot of testing back in the 60s, but in order to make sure this works before they put in the investment of actually building this thing, they've actually built it in a supercomputer and ran thousands of simulations, tweaking and adapting and changing it and improving it along the way. So at least in the virtual world, we know this thing works. Plus, TerraPower is building an impressive support network, creating relationships with Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Vanderbilt University, and the government of China. And they were awarded a $40 million grant from the Department of Energy. They hope to get their first demonstration plant up and going in the next four years and have a commercial plant working by the late 2020s. Think about what this means if they can pull this off. Carbon-free energy. From an abundant fuel source, it's already been mined. It's just sitting there. Works for decades without refueling, and it's safer because it can't melt down like light water reactors. Now, most of the detractors of the traveling wave reactor technology have been people that are very pro-thorium. They want to see that be incorporated instead. But it seems like I read that this breeder reactor technology can be reconfigured to work with thorium, so this could actually be a step in that direction. Although I could be wrong about that, don't quote me. Bill Gates believes in miracles. But not the biblical kind, miracles in the sense that we have the entirety of human knowledge available at our fingertips at all times. We can put hundreds of people in a 300 ton steel can and make it fly through the air and somehow that's the safest mode of transportation. We take for granted the ability to do things that would have been deemed witchcraft just 200 years ago. Our entire world is a miracle. So why not this one too? Whether it's the traveling wave reactor or thorium reactors or fusion reactors, we are going to completely reinvent our energy grid over the next 50 years. And if you want to take advantage of that and be a part of it, have a career and a future in it, it all starts with your education. And Lumerit is a smart way to do college. Instead of going to an expensive campus, paying expensive parking for expensive classes, Lumerit goes around and finds transferable credits that you can take online for far less money. You simply tell them where you'd like to get your degree, and Lumerit does the rest. I mean, you still have to do the work. Lumerit doesn't take the test for you. At a time when college graduates are leaving school with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, you owe it to yourself to look at all the options, and Lumerit is one of those options. If you want to get your degree faster, if you want to get it cheaper, if you want to get it on your couch, for the most part, uh, let Lumerit do the work for you. If you want a free quote, you can go to lumerit.com slash answerswithjoe and see if it'll save you some money. You might be surprised. Lumerit.com slash answerswithjoe. Links down in the description. I want to thank Lumera for supporting this video, and of course, as always, a huge shout out to my answer files on Patreon who make all this so awesome and they contribute so much to the channel. I thank you guys so much. There are some new people. I gotta murder their names real quick. There's uh, Christian Zuppinger, uh, Jordan Cook, Gerald Clark, James Davis, Alexander Lockinsonen, uh, Alexander Ricky Rittersholm, two Alexanders, Martin M, Lost Mecca, Randolph Schnack, Tony Curry, Hannah Anderberg, Carlos Armanderes, uh, Newt Bootsma, my new favorite name ever, uh, Luis, Kinsey Beck, F. Rob Dorsey, Carl P. Corliss, Kirsten Finn, and Jason Ball. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to join them, get access to cool perks and kind of get updates and be a part of this whole thing, you can go to patreon.com slash answerswithjoe. T-shirts available in the store at answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up or share it with somebody that you love. And if this is your first time here, check out some of my other videos. You might like those too. They're all on cool topics like this. And if you do like those, hit subscribe. You'll be the first to see them every Monday. And if you are subscribed and you haven't clicked the notification bell, you might want to do that. It will make you part of the notification squad. Otherwise, you might not uh, see it because YouTube's being like that these days. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys go out, have an eye-opening week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.